صلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل سيدنا سيدنا محمد بارك وسلم عليه صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله Continuing our discussion on Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, Last time we talked about his journey back from, from Egypt uh, to Canaan uh, And along with him of course was his wife And with her was uh, Bibi Hajra uh, Who had been given to her as a gift by the king of Egypt When he released her There are many details that people try to fill into these stories uh, unfortunately, uh, that if you start looking at them, uh, they are not befitting the character of a prophet. Uh, and so we have to be very careful, especially when people are trying to take stories from other books and try to fit them in to, to make the storyline more consistent with what they think it should be. So we need to be very careful with these things. Uh, from what we know, uh, Again, you know, these are prophets of Allah who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, favored and, and the prophets are masum, so they are innocent. And we need to keep this in mind all the time, uh, especially when we're talking about them or thinking about them. Uh, and so, you know, when, when they come back to Canaan, again, you know, Bibi Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim al-Islam, and Ibrahim al-Islam, both of them are, have, are old. So, and they still don't have a son. And even the dua of Ibrahim, Rabbi habli minas salihin. You know, my Lord, uh, give me a righteous son. You know, again, he didn't ask just for a son, but a righteous son. Uh, this is also in accordance with what Allah SWT wants him to do. You know, if you remember, when he's being thrown into the fire, he didn't ask it for anything. You know, because his maqam is that he is pleased with the pleasure of Allah. Uh, but here he knows that the nur of Rasulullah is within him. You know, and that nur has to be passed on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to ask for a son. And he asked for a son. And for many years he's asking for a son and there is no son. You know. And so now Bibi Sara, she uh, suggests to Ibrahim al-Islam that maybe he should marry Bibi Hajra. And she frees her and he marries her. And through her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a son. And he names the son Ismail. And as we mentioned, you know, not long after he's born, the command comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and, and leave this son and this wife in the wilderness of Taran, you know, which is the area around Makkah, you know, a desert wilderness. And he complies, you know, without hesitation again. You know, the command comes from Allah and he submits himself to Allah, to Allah's will. They're left there and we talked about that in, in you know, Surah 14, Surah, number, Surah Ibrahim, verse number 37, you know, how he makes the dua as he's leaving. And we've already talked about this, so I'm not going to go into the details of that again. And we also talked about, you know, when he left, you know, provisions run out. And then, you know, she's sitting there with, with a hungry child, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. And she goes upon Safa and she stands there looking for anybody and then she leaves there and she runs down uh, and she goes to Marwa, you know, the two hills that were close by, looking upon her son as much as she can. Uh, except in the dip when she can't see him, she runs. And even today we emulate her, you know, in this, in this process. You know, where she ran, we run, where she was walking, we walk. Uh, the whole time, you know, this is part of the Umrah, this is part of the Hajj. Yeah. And so, 
uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved her action so much that he makes this an, uh, you know, an obligation for us to emulate her. You know, but what is her action? You know, she's running for her child. You know, but there are many mothers who sacrifice for their children. You know, and yet, you know, we don't emulate them. You know, the thing is that she's not just running for any child. You know, she's, she's concerned in looking after the welfare of a prophet. This child is a prophet. And this child isn't just any prophet. You know, this child is that prophet who is carrying the nur of Rasulullah within him to be passed down through the generations. So she's running out of love for that child, and so Allah SWT now commands us to emulate her. Um, so, you know, again, that connection with the Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. And so, you know, and we, she does this, and so until the day of Qiyamah, we will, we will keep doing this. The water, again, is so blessed and so much blessings within that water that, you know, it's not just water, but it's also food. And then, you know, we talked about how the people of Juram came and she, you know, welcomed them and they decided to stay there and she welcomed them to stay there. You know, and so Ismail al-Islam grows up among them. Ibrahim al-Islam is making trips back and forth between Canaan, which, you know, roughly a thousand miles away, all the way down to Makkah, uh, and back and forth periodically. Uh, and on one of these trips, you know, he's commanded uh, by Allah SWT, he sees a dream in which he sees you know, that he is sacrificing his son, his only son at this time, Ismail al -Islam. And so he gets up the next day and he sacrifices a hundred camels. And the next night he sees the same dream. And then the same thing, he has sacrificed a hundred camels, trying to emancipate, you know, his son by sacrificing these camels. And then the third night, the same dream. And then after this, now he goes to his son. And his son, you know, Allah SWT mentions that, you know, at this time, his son has just come of an age where he can actually help his father. Before now, you know, the father was looking after the son and now the son can actually help his father do things. Uh, and so when he comes at this time, now, you know, when he's born, it said, okay, we'll leave him. And now he comes of, of, of an of a age where he can help his father and Allah SWT says, well, sacrifice him. And so Ismail, I mean, Ibrahim al -Islam goes to Ismail al -Islam and he says to his son, he says that I've seen in a, in a vision, I've seen that in a dream that I am sacrificing you. So what do you say to this? Ismail al-Islam, of course, is a prophet himself. And he knows that the dreams of the prophets are part of revelation. You know, they cannot be wrong. You know, for us, uh, you know, Rasulullah said that we have three kinds of dreams. You know, among them, the, you know, what we are thinking. One is that, you know, we're thinking about something, so we see it in our dream. Another dream is that, you know, was was up from shaitan. And for those dreams, you know, for bad dreams, Rasulullah recommended or, or told us that, you know, the cure for these or actually uh, the, the treatment for them so that they don't affect us in a negative way is that, you know, if you see that type of dream, you get up, you know, you spit on your left side three times and you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Wa Min Sharra Hadhi Ru'ya. You know, I seek refuge with Allah from shaitan and from the evil of what I have seen. Uh, and Rasulullah said, and you don't tell anybody these dreams. You know, you do this, you don't tell anybody. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not any, let, allow any harm to come to you from these types of dreams. And of course, the, the third type is the dream that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Uh, you know, glad tidings from him. And there are other aspects of dreams which we will talk about later, especially when we talk about Yusuf al-Islam, inshallah. Uh, but when Ibrahim al-Islam, he tells his son that I have seen this dream, his son knowing that his father is a prophet, he himself is a prophet, and the, that the dreams are part of revelation, so it cannot be true. So this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he must be sacrificed. So what does Ismail al-Islam say? 
you read Surah Safat, Surah number 37, uh, starting from verse 100 and going down. Uh, you know, Ismail al-Islam says that, you know, do as you are commanded, and if Allah so wills, you will find me among those who are patient. You know, sabirun, and I will be among those who are patient. You know, which is a very important aspect here to remember. You know, because later on we'll talk about Wabashir Sabirin, you know, and glad tidings to those who are patient. And so Ibrahim al Islam he doesn't tell his wife. You know, Ismail al Islam doesn't tell his mother what is going on. And you know, two of them make, you know, get together, they make a plan and this is what they're going to do, and they will go to Mina, you know, which is on the outskirts of Mafka. And this is where they'll carry out this command. Uh, and so the morning that they're, they, they make the plans for, you know, they get up, each son, the son and the father, quietly, and they leave. And along the way, you know, Ibrahim al-Islam meets an old man. You know, old man, you know, kind of signifies wisdom. And so he meets this old man who, who says to Ibrahim al-Islam, he says that, uh, you know, what are you doing? You know, where are you going? He says, I'm going to sacrifice my son. He says, how can anybody uh, uh, imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command him to sacrifice his son? You know, I mean, this, is, this doesn't make any sense. You know, he tries to reason with Ibrahim al-Islam. Ibrahim al-Islam, of course, knows, realizes this is shaitan. He st throws stones at him, runs him off, and he runs off, and then he goes a little bit further ahead, and again, another old man comes, you know, trying to argue and reason with him. Yeah. Same thing, Ibrahim al-Islam stones him, and he runs off in the same, same process. Third place, you know, a little further ahead, same thing, old man comes, you know, and Ibrahim al-Islam has gives him the same reaction, yeah, so and runs him off. Audhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Allahu akbar, throwing the stones, and he runs off. You know, and this is you know teaches us that that you know every time we intend on doing what we know is is the command of Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa taala wants from us, you know there will always be obstacles in the way. And we need to override those obstacles and keep moving forward. Uh, and again, these are the signs of Allah. You know, uh, you know like with Safa and Marwa, Allah says, you know, as Safa wal Marwa min sha'air Allah. That these are the signs of Allah. Why? Because they remind us of the running of Bibi Hajar, which reminds us of Ismail al Islam, which reminds us of Rasulullah, who is the greatest sign of Allah. Subhanahu he says these are the signs of Allah because you know, they remind us when we look at them properly, we, we, we look at them you know, with basirat, with, with this deep uh, reflection, then we understand you know, the connection with the Rasulullah who is the greatest sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way with the Jamarat, you know, which are the places where Ibrahim al-Islam you know, threw stones at this old man who was shaitan. So that's why, you know, when we go for Hajj, you know, we emulate Ibrahim al-Islam. These are his, uh, the signs of Allah. Because it reminds us of that connection with Ibrahim al-Islam. When they go forward, you know, they come to the place. Uh, Ibrahim al-Islam has his knife that he sharpened very well. Because he doesn't want to hurt his son. He wants to make this quick. And, you know, they take out blindfolds and they each blindfold each other so they can't see. And so Ibrahim al-Islam doesn't want, you know, that he sees the son of uh, his son and that love come into his heart and he hesitate from the command of Allah. And if you read, you know, in these verses, you know, Allah subhanahu wa says that Ibrahim al-Islam, he, he laid Ismail al-Islam on his forehead. Lil Jabin, you know, on the forehead. You know, if you think about that, though, you know, if you set, if, when we slaughter animals, we don't lay them on their foreheads. And we lay them on their side and we run the knife around over their necks. You know. And yet, with Ismail al-Islam, 
Ibrahim al -Islam lays him lil jabin on his forehead, which is what position? You know, when you're on your forehead, what are you doing? You're making sajda. Again, an important point to understand and note. And then, you know, as he's blindfolded, he's trying to cut his son. You know, he's trying to sacrifice his son. And Allah you know, reveals to him that you have fulfilled, you know, the command. Yeah. And then Allah Subhanahu wa says, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْهِنْ عَظِيمٌ you know, and we ransomed, we ransomed Ismail al -Islam with this great sacrifice. Yeah. And we tarak, we postponed or delayed or or, uh, or removed this fil for later generations. So what happens here is that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a ram from Jannah and Ismail al-Islam is removed and the ram is placed in his place and so Ibrahim al-Islam cuts or sacrifices, slaughters, the ram. Uh, and then when he takes off his blindfold, he sees the ram and he sees Ismail al-Islam standing up. Uh, and of course, you know, in... in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Ibrahim al -Islam, that you have fulfilled your command now, and he has been ransomed with this great ransom and we have postponed this for later generations now, and then wassalamun ala Ibrahim and peace be upon Ibrahim you know when we look at the surface of this we see, okay, you know, Ismail al-Islam is replaced by the ram, and the ram is, is sacrificed. You know, yet the thing is, if we look at the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals here, you know, is, وَفَدَيْنَهُ بِذِبْهِنَ عَظِيمٌ And we ransomed him with this great sacrifice. وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ And we postponed this for later generations. You know, so if I, if I take the first part of the first verse, and we ransom him with this great sacrifice. And I say that this great sacrifice is the ram because the ram came from Jannah. The thing is that it's still a ram. And then it says, and we postponed this for later generations. Well, the ram wasn't postponed. The ram was sacrificed then. So if I, if I say that this was this great sacrifice was the ram, The ram's still an animal, even though it's an animal from Jannah. But then it doesn't fit the next verse, because the ram wasn't postponed, the ram was sacrificed then. So some people say, well, you know, it's all of these sacrifices that we're continuing to do. But again, you know, what was he ransomed with? And when we're Studying the, st the, the story of Ibrahim al-Islam and the family of Ibrahim al-Islam, we need to remember in every salat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has us say what? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidum majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidum majid. You know. so, so we can't forget the connection between the family of Ibrahim al-Islam and his family and Rasulullah and his family. You know, this connection is something that we can't uh, separate. You know, it's locked in and there's no way to separate it. You know, so now the question comes, well, what was the ransom that Allah Subhanahu wa says that this is a great ransom that was postponed for later generations? who was sacrificed with his head on the, on the ground in the form of sajda, just like Ismail al-Islam was placed, and who was patient. And we look at Surah Baqarah, and we find the answer in Surah Baqarah, verses 156 or 7 and, and so forth. Where Allah says, 
you know, that we will try you, you know, for sure we will try you, uh, with something of hunger, thirst, uh, your offspring, your lives, your wealth. And then they said, in the end, he says, "Well, Bashir is sadirin." These reverses, you know, if we look at this sacrifice, the sacrifice of who? The sacrifice of Imam Hussein al-Islam. So Ismail al-Islam is is ransomed by the sacrifice of, Isma, of Imam Hussein al-Islam, which was postponed for later generations. And this is that connection between the family of Ibrahim al-Islam and the family of Rasulullah sallallahu because this is the sacrifice that gives life to the tree of Islam you know the sacrifice of, of Imam Hussein al-Islam you know and this is the sacrifice you know that we that we see uh, you know and this is the only sacrifice if we look throughout history where all of the the criteria that Allah Subhanahu wa places in these verses, you know, as far as being being tested you know, with something of of hunger, w loss of wealth, offspring, your lives, and, and all of these things, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa says that I will try you with all of these things, and the and the conjunction in all of the in the verses wa and, you know, and if you understand conjunction of and. It means that all of these parts have to be inclusive for for the statement to be con to for the statement be to be true. You know, if the conjunction was an or, then one of them would be inclusive, or or two of them would could be inclusive, and the statement would be complete. But here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "And you know that we will try you with something uh, of fear uh, and." and well, uh, and and uh, hunger and wealth, thamarat, offspring, you know, and and your lives. So all of this, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in, in these verses in Surah Baqarah. Again, we have to understand that connection, uh, and these are, you know, again, if we don't ponder over the verses. Uh, we don't find the connections, you know, we get kind of get lost in the superficial aspect of things uh, without understanding anything be beyond that. And so, uh, you know, when we look at, again, the life of Imam Hussein al-Islam and the sacrifice that he gave, uh, you know, this is, he is the ransom for the sacrifice of Ismail al-Islam. Uh, and then, but coming back to Ismail al-Islam, so after this sacrifice, you know, then of course Ibrahim al-Islam he goes back, uh, and I'm just going to mention a few things here, and then we'll we'll talk more next time, inshallah. Uh, is that the, you know, when he goes back, uh, now you know, this sacrifice has been completed uh, of Ibrahim al-Islam, and Allah Subhanahu wa sends. Uh, angels to Ibrahim al-Islam. The practice of Ibrahim al-Islam was that he would not eat unless there were guests present. Because Allah subhanahu wa does not take account of the food that you feed uh, or that you eat with your guest. And so he had been hungry for seven days. And Lut al-Islam, the nephew of, of uh, Ibrahim al-Islam, had been sent uh, to a different area to preach in Canaan. Uh, and of course the people there, and we'll talk about this later, but the people there did not listen, so Allah subhanahu wa sent angels to go and punish them. Uh, but he told these angels to stop by Ibrahim al-Islam first, uh, because he hasn't eaten in, in three days, and be his guest. Uh, and so when the angel, and also to give him glad tidings. So when the angels came, you know, Ibrahim al-Islam, they came in the form of very handsome young men. Uh, and so Ibrahim al-Islam, he sees them and he has a calf, and he slaughters the calf, and he roasts the calf, uh, and he gets the food ready for them, and you know, he's very happy to have guests, and he places it before them. And of course, they don't eat. You know, uh, they are angels, 
and they don't need to eat. And so when they don't extend their hand to the food, then Ibrahim al Islam he says that I fear, you know, that you have bad intention, you know, why are you not eating? And so they say, Do not fear us because we have been sent by Allah, you know, and we are here on our way to go and uh, punish the people of Lut alayhi salam. But we also have come to give you glad tidings of a son, Ishaq, whose name will be Ishaq, and also of Jacob, the grandson. So when they brought the glad tidings, it's the glad tidings of not only Ishaq alayhi salam, but also Yaqub alayhi salam, you know, that you will have this son, and you will also have the grandson. And Bibi Sara, who was there, and she starts laughing, she says, how can I have a son? And they say, why? The angels, when she laughs, they ask her, why are you laughing? She says, you know, how can I have a son when you see I'm an old woman and my husband is old? You know, so then they say that, why do you, uh, do you doubt the power of Allah? You know, for him, everything is easy. Uh, and so from this, you know, after this, then Allah subhanahu wa grants them the son Ishaq alayhi uh, salam. And so... Uh, I will end here today uh, and come back to certain points on this uh, next time, inshallah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and fill our hearts with His true love and the true love of His beloved Prophet Muhammad. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي العذاب النار وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعاله وسلم يجمعين برحمته يا رحمة